And now we're going to take a look at the Arc Bird. And this is a little bit different. This is interesting because I thought this would be kind of a cool way to do UHF. Because rather than plugging straight into your transmitter, what you can do is you can take one of your regular 2.4 gig receivers and just run some patch leads from these connections here into your receiver. So then you can mount this a long way away. You can mount it on a pole out the back, you know, quite a few meters away from where you're operating to get a better coverage. And it means you don't have to change your transmitter at all. There's no plugs to plug in, there's nothing. It operates on a 2.4 link from your transmitter to the receiver that's plugged into here and then rebroadcasts on 433. It's actually quite a cool, I like that concept because it means that one of the problems we have with UHF can be almost eliminated. One of the problems that often happens is you get the transmitter, your UHF transmitter interferes with your video signal because they're so close. If you're holding your transmitter and it's got, if it's pumping out half a watt on UHF and you've got a sensitive 1.2 gigahertz receiver for your video nearby, it's very easy to get that the transmitter signal clobbering your video. And the best way to reduce that effect is to move the RC transmitter, your, your UHF transmitter, away from your video receiver. So what's better than simply getting a tripod, sticking this on it, walking 50 meters away, sticking it somewhere where you're happy, and then you can get the antenna for this quite elevated. You can stick it on a pole if you want to, you get much better coverage. Brilliant concept, but how well has it been implemented with this UHF system? Let's have a look and see what we find if we take this apart. Now again, metal case, as you'd expect, and it's silver, woo, silver. Um, Already I'm not getting that, um, I'm not getting warm fuzzy feelings out of it because look at this antenna jack here, this, it doesn't line up with the plate very well. That, that sort of sends little warning signals when, you know, when something simple like that from the outside, you go in being a little bit apprehensive about what you're going to find when you get further in. So what we will do is, let's undo the, actually these are Allen, oh the Phillips screws, no I thought they were Allen key for a moment, but they're not, they're Phillips headed screws, so we'll whip those out. And see, again, no power switch on this one. No power switch. It's just got the, you know, one set of power. Because, of course, if you're running that far from your video receiver, you don't need to run on a low power mode. You can run at full power all the time, I suppose, if you want to. So there's no need, because that low power on your transmitter for the other systems can help reduce any bleed through to your video. So there we go. That's a fairly standard. Again, it's an extruded case with a board that should slide out now. There we go. It slides right out. So let's take a look at this uh, and see what we find inside. Notice also immediately that, it, again, it's another module-based system. They're using a module here, off-the-shelf module, and then they've built the rest of the guts of it. One thing I've also noticed which immediately sours me a little bit to this as an engineer is they've scraped the designation off this processor chip. Why? We're not stupid. Anyone that wants to copy this can pretty quickly work out what that chip is. I mean there's only a certain number of chips and the pinouts are pretty easy to spot if you're used to using and this looks suspiciously like an Atmel chip to me. My goodness did they think no one would ever you know cotton on to that but it gets worse. Oh look at this. Here is the module and look they've scraped off the name of the module. <laughs> Honestly, really? Seriously, people? Do you honestly think that people are going to copy this? I mean, I, t oh, I don't know. Maybe they fear the other Chinese manufacturers will get out there and, and copy the damn thing. But let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, we've got this module which is going to do all the UHF goodness, so we don't know how that performs. The, the designation scrapped off. I can't find anything any spec sheets for this, so I don't know. I don't even know the power output, the true power output of that. I haven't got a clue. Over here we've got our power section and it's got a switch mode power supply which is good because it means we can run on a wider range of voltages. I don't know what it says on here. It says three cell battery. Um, so it just says three cell and it says, no, nah, that's all it says. Uh, I'll have a look, have to look at the instructions but it's got a switch mode power supply. It's going to be more efficient than the easy UHF. It's not wasting a whole lot of the power turning it into heat which is good. Um, yeah, and then we've got our processor here. All that really does is take the input signals from all these channels convert them into a digital stream which will then go into the module and the module will then broadcast it out of this. Now we don't know how well the output on this is filtered and maybe you know, I'd be a little bit suspicious that they designed this to operate as a what you basically call a repeater station. Maybe because this module spews out so much noise that they had to. <laughs> I don't know, I really don't. But um, yeah, let's uh, have a look on the back side. Oh it's a double sided load as we call it. It's got some Looks like three terminal regulators on here. So there's a lot of stuff going on, or transistors. I'm not sure. I'd have to have a close look. Heat sink again, epoxied to the module. You see, this is the problem we have with these modules. Mechanically, they've got a heat sink glued to the module. And again, the module's not exactly square on the board. Um, heat sink like this inside this metal extrusion, where it's not actually even touching, I don't think, the outside case. It's pretty limited. After 
extended operation. This will get hot and there's nowhere for the heat to go. It's inside a case. It's not very good. This should be bonded to the actual case itself. So mm, anyway, um, as with the other systems, the, the proof will really be in the bench testing. When I throw them on the bench, we do some serious analytical tests of how they're performing. That's what we'll know. But as an engineering solution, this is, you know, the manufacturing design, it's probably a little better in my mind than the than the uh, Dragon Link, but I would say I would opt for the Easy UHF or the Shearer Long Range over this solution, mainly because of this unknown module here. We don't know what it is, and the fact that the stupid silly boy manufacturers thought they'd scrape the numbers off things. God, bloody kids. Anyway, so that is the ArcBird transmitter. Let's have a look at the receiver. And here is that receiver, 10 channel 433 UHF frequency hopping spread spectrum. And I mean, you know, um, it looks fairly good. It's fairly common construction, these little sort of plastic cases that you get on some of the smaller trans uh, smaller receivers, even for 2.4 gigahertz. It's got some instructions on the back. What could possibly be wrong with this setup? Well, I'm going to show you what's wrong with this setup. I'm going to, honestly, I, I couldn't believe it when I unpacked this thing. This is for radio control models, and it's a reasonably small size. I'll just back out a bit so you can see the size of it. It's a reasonably small size UHF receiver. You think, well, that's quite good. You could use that in, in a reasonable small model because of the size of it. But if you go along here, look, look at this. What are they thinking? This is a magnetic base and th this is a really stiff cable um, and it's not that long um, and it's thick and oh, heavy and oh, come on, let's get serious. So having said that, let's, let's Peel this plastic off and have a look inside and see just how well it's designed and built. But, you know, this ArcBird thing, it, great idea, but so far I'm less than impressed. Right, well I got the case off a little bit, but <laughs> believe it or not, um, you can't even, you, know, the, the, you have to take it off along the cord because the cord goes through that hole, so <laughs> you can't, <laughs> I don't know. And we've got this same module based approach again, a little circuit board here, a little daughter board, and uh, again they've scraped the Scrape that off there. Oh, really? Seriously? Come on. That's almost certainly going to be the Silicon Labs chip that's used in the in the other in the uh, Easy UHF system. But I'd have to have a look. I'd have to have a look at the pinouts to make sure that. But uh, there we go. Anyway, um, and look, 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 look. They're using an old school crystal. Oh my God! What's going on there? These are so fragile compared to the surface mount. Why are they doing that? This is 1960s people. What's going on? And on the back is a double-sided load. On the back we've got a processor. And again, we would never guess what that was, would we? No, absolutely not. Oh, morons. So, um, but apart from that, the board construction looks reasonably good. They've got a three-terminal regulator, probably an LM triple ones, a one triple, triple one seven or something like that. I don't know. I'm not going to bother looking it up. It's got goo here, goo to hold the plastic case on. Um, and that, that receiver antenna, I mean, why didn't they just use an SMA? It's got a footprint for an SMA or a UHF, oh no, UFL on there. They could have used the UFL, but they ran this horrible grotty cable. So you could unsolder this and put your own cable on there, get rid of the hot snot on the back. Um, and, and, it, and it will work, you know, I mean, but oh, I'm going to test it. We're going to try it out. We're going to see how it works. Who knows, this could be the best thing since sliced bread, but you know, this kind of thing just really sours me to it. But there we go. That's the physical construction anyway. And this series of videos is about the physical construction and the general engineering design of these systems. So, um, th th this is satisfactory. It's satisfactory. It doesn't spin my wheels, but you know, there's, to be totally honest, there's not that much to grizzle about apart from this old school crystal here. And uh, so we'll throw this on the bench along with the others and see how they pan out. One thing just before I go, I forgot to mention that this does have a power um, configuration as well. The, like the others, it has a little LED for status, but it has this little pot for adjusting the power on the ArcBird. Um, so you can actually fine tune the power, just wind it up and down, I suppose. That's kind of novel, why you'd want to have that degree of precision over the power control. But as it says here, um, if you can read it, power adjust. There you go. If you need to adjust the power, you can.